Let's say you're working with your own data store to help plan itineraries for your users. It generates embeddings, does the nearest neighbor search based on interests and locations, and then generates a day-by-day -day itinerary for your users. Cool, right? This approach to app development is called RAG, short for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and is a common approach for teaching LLMs about knowledge that is not necessarily publicly available. It's a great solution if you want an LLM to generate answers based on your own app custom data, like the custom vacation itineraries that Compass has been generating. This approach has some limitations. For example, imagine you want to plan a two weeks vacation to Europe, but you have no idea about the local weather. <sighs> Is it going to be raining cats and dogs or will the sun come out and shine bright? Not only will this have an influence on the kind of clothes you need to bring, but it also impacts what kind of activities you can do. The question is, how can we connect the Compass app to the real world so it can take the weather forecast into account when suggesting activities for the trip the user is interested in? There are plenty of APIs for getting the weather forecast and also the historic weather for just about any location on Earth. So can we teach Gemini to call the weather forecast when it generates a list of suggested activities for a location? Well, you might have heard about the concept of tool calling, often known as function calling. This allows the model to request calling the APIs or local functions in order to help generate an answer for users' questions. Note that the model might have it at its own disposal multiple tools. So it is important to present each tool in an accurate and descriptive fashion. Let's take a look at how this works. OK, so here in the documentation, I can see that in order to implement function calling, I need to define a tool. I am going to define a tool called weather forecast, like so. So I guess in order to fetch the weather for the specific location, we'd need the longitude and longitude coordinates. So let me define these as input parameters for the tool. Inside the tool, I can then call the weather forecast API. Here, I'm using Open Meteo, but you can use any weather provider you like. All right, once I get the results from the API, I can pass it back to the caller of the tool. Remember to configure your API keys for all the services before publishing your app. Now, to enable the model call to the API, I need to register my weather forecast tool when prompting the model right here in the generate call. Gemini already knows the coordinates for many popular locations, but we can also create a tool to help it look up locations whenever needed. Well, that was almost too easy. Let me update the prompt to tell the model to pick up activities based on the local weather. And since I've set up GenKit to connect the local Firebase simulator, I can quickly run this on my development machine. Let's give it a try. I want to go on a two-week trip to Europe. So once I send the request, the model will use the data in our database to pick up places in Europe. It will then use a weather forecast tool to get the local weather for the period I plan to go on vacation, and then use the data from our database to select matching activities. And here we go. It seems like the weather in Europe is going to be quite nice in the next couple of weeks. So the model suggested some outdoor activities. Let's take a look at GenKit traces to understand how the model generated this answer. Here, I can see that the model actually did call the weather API which returned the weather conditions for various locations the model suggested. Nice. So thanks to tool calling, I was able to connect Gemini to real world and provide useful context for generating answers that better match user queries. Something that sounded like it would be hard to implement was actually pretty easy to implement thanks to GenKit powerful abstraction. To learn more about GenKit's features, such as tool calling, check out the GenKit documentation and our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Pavel, 
the Gen Q Tech Lead has published a bunch of videos that deep dive into some of the key concepts of GenKit. And Peter and Noe did a couple of live streams in which they talked about GenKit as well. Check them out. The links are in the description. So now that we have a pretty powerful AI flow for our app, we need to connect it to the UI. And I believe this is something that James and Abby will cover in their video. Thanks for watching and keep generating great apps.